What's going on guys? Sin for the win here and first and foremost, I just want to thank you all for helping me get to 10,000 subs on YouTube. That is insane. I wanted to give you guys something special and this was one of the most requested videos that I make. Now most of the footage in this video is taken from my Seattle Vikings franchise mode, so definitely go check that out if you haven't already. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is how to scout in NHL 19. First and foremost, you want to try to make sure that you have some of the best scouts that you can have and covering as many of the major leagues as possible. So how do you gauge if a scout is good or not? Two things, you want to know what their overall scouting rating is and what regions that they're most efficient in. Another thing to note is that the longer a single scout stays in a region, the more efficient he gets at scouting it. My personal rule of thumb is I don't have an amateur scout with less than a B- rating and I don't start them in a region that has less than a B grade at efficiency. Now it might take a few years to get to this point and that's okay. Hiring and firing scouts is just part of the game, but I will suggest not to make a move until you know that there's a better scout for that region to replace them. One more thing to note is that if you're playing with owner mode off, you do not have to worry about the scout salary cap. So feel free to hire away and give them some extra money to make sure they come to your team. The format that I use for my teams is I have four NHL scouts, one for each division, and I don't have any AHL scouts. I just haven't found that they're useful in any way. You have your pro scouts in the NHL to scout your opponents and also scout for trade options and your amateur scouts to scout for prospects. Now this is a default setting, but it's definitely worth mentioning. You want to have the auto scouting on and set to both. Now this doesn't mean that you can't still manually scout, nor will it conflict with your manual scouting, but this is still an important setting to leave on and I'll explain why in a little bit. You can officially start scouting after the free agency period and right before preseason, so you want to get on that right away. There's a couple options before you scout. You always want to go with scout specific players and then go to potential and comparison. Knowing a player's potential is far and away the most important thing when it comes to drafting. Then from there, all you want to do is fill up your scout's assigned players all the way to the end. You want to keep him busy all year. Now it can be a bit tedious and that's why I suggest to just fill it up from the beginning and keep him busy all the way towards the trade deadline. Each scout has a maximum of 50 players that they can be assigned and it takes less days to scout each player the more efficient they are at the region. Now you'll start to notice here, even though some of these guys aren't even projected to be drafted, you definitely still want to scout them. I have found low elites in the 3, 4, 5, and 600 in the central scouting ranking. Now obviously with some of the smaller regions there aren't as many players so it takes less time to scout in total. And that for me is when the auto scout will kick in. After they're done getting the potential in comparison I usually just let them auto scout to get the character and skill assessments done. Now you may have noticed that for some of these larger regions I actually have two scouts present. I use the better one to get the potential in comparison and the second one who's not as good to go for the character and skill assessment because those are less important than potentials. Now that's obviously not to say that they're useless, you definitely want to have good character in your locker room because that will help you with your team chemistry later down the road. Now that you've got most of your scouts assigned to find potentials and comparisons, you have two options. You can leave your secondary scouts in those regions off or you can min-max and actually choose what they're going to look at, strengths and weaknesses, character assessments, or skill assessments. When you first start out and you have maybe not the strongest of scouts, you might want to do it manually, but once you get those really good scouts, you can definitely afford to leave them on auto scout and they'll get almost all of it done for you. Now if you do mimic the methods shown here, I can guarantee you that you will have the most efficient scouting in the league. You will be finding between 10 to 25 elites in every draft. Now for your pro scouts, I'd suggest leaving them on auto until you see someone that you might want to trade for and then you start scouting those options out to find out exactly what they are if they aren't already scouted. So now let's recap everything we went over in this video. Number one, make sure that you have the best scouts available and remember it could take a few years to get your A team together. 
Number two, cover every region possible, but be sure to focus on the major regions. Number three, no AHL scouts. They are basically useless. Number four, remember to have your auto scout set to both. You don't want your scouts to get lazy on you when your assignment runs out, do ya? And last but not least, you want to prioritize potential and comparison, but don't neglect their character or skill set. This will help you not only get the best players for your team, but the right players for your team so you can build up into a dynasty. Hope you guys out there found this informative. If you did, remember to hit that like button on the way out and subscribe if you haven't already for more NHL content. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow, and you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.